Hello everyone, photographer Andre Designs here with a new retouch video and today we'll be retouching this beautiful image. Before we start retouching this image though, I'm going to show you guys how to add my action. Alright, so let me quickly come over this side and I'm going to set this, uh, I'm going to reset this. And I'm going to put it back to the default. Alright, so once you go into, once you go into actions, right? You come here and you go to actions. Action panel is up you're going to see the default uh, actions that Photoshop provides. What you're going to do, you're going to delete them because you don't need to use um, Photoshop default actions. <laughs> you need to use my actions, all right? Okay, good. So once you go to the website and you download the action, you're going to drag it over here. And then you're going to come to the top and press button mode. And there you go. The actions are added. Perfect. All right, so this image was taken with a Nikon Z6. I was shooting in studio, obviously. <laughs> I was shooting with the 85 millimeter lens. My shutter speed was at 1 over 1 60th of a second. I was shooting F9. And always ensure that you're shooting at ISO 100 when you're shooting in studio. All right, so let's get right to the retouching. All right, so I'm going to pull up the 64 bit action. Normally, you use 64 bit when you are editing a raw image. And this is a raw image. And also, there's an option here that you should turn on when you're editing raw image, right? 16-bit channel. Good. So it gives you more. It show you uh, more detail in your image when you use that option. All right. So once you select the frequency separation, you're gonna go down to the low frequency layer, and then I'm gonna press M on my keyboard for the mixer brush. That is the shortcut I use for my mixer brush. For you, it's going to be nested under brushes over here. So you just hold it down and then you'll see the mixer brush up here and then you just click the mixer brush all right so let me go back to mixer brush normally when you're in when you just click on uh, when you just click on the mixer brush it looks like this right so what you're gonna do is to unclick this option then put this at 2% everything else here remains the same and always ensure that select all layers is unchecked if that is checked you're gonna have problems all right, so I'm gonna come down here to the low frequency layer and I'm gonna start making some adjustment to the image, all right? Uh, let me press, I'm not sure what's happening. Oh, I need to press enter. All right, good. So I'm gonna start with the model's face. I'm just gonna zoom the face a little bit. I'm gonna use the bracket on my keyboard to adjust the, the size of the brush and then I'm gonna brush. So I'm using, well, I am brushing the lighted area and then over here is dark so I'm just doing a dark area here all right good then I'm gonna come over this side and brush so basically what I'm doing I'm flattening the skin because I want it to be on one level and I want to get rid of the pimples as well so I'm flattening the pimples so we could get rid of the pimples pretty easy when we're using the clown stamp or whatever tool you use to remove your pimples all right I'm not sure if you guys are seeing that line that line right there I think it's because of my screen recorder I don't know how to remove it so <laughs> just gonna leave it there all right so let's look at the before and after for what I've done just now before and after good so I'm just flattening the image a little bit more you should also ensure that when you're doing using the mixer brush you should you should not go from the light area to the dark area. You should always stay in the lighted area and then you stop and then mix in the dark area because you don't want to mix them together. It might look unreal. So I'm going to come down to the model's neck. But there are times though that you may have to mix both areas just to even out the, the image a bit. Like right, like what I'm doing right here now. Good. So I'm going to do that. Also, when you're shooting in studio, if you look right here, you can see where the the color of the background is spilling on the model's um, neck. You you'd need to ensure that you have well, not everyone will have two lights, but try to be further away from the background to avoid having the light spilling on the model's uh, neck or shoulder or wherever. All right, we could easily well fix that in Photoshop, but just try to avoid it when you're in studio. All right. Normally, you'd use a second light to separate the model from the background, but in this case, I didn't. All right. Not all the images are like that, though, so that's a good thing. All right, so I'm just mixing the arm. 
back in the chest. Right, we're going to look at the before and after for what I've just done. So before and after. Good. So I'm going to mix here a little bit more. Alright, good. Then I'm going to zoom up the picture a little bit more and I'm going to mix. So this area is a dark area and I'm kind of mixing it with the lighted area. Just to smooth out a little bit. You just have to know which section you're able to mix the lighted area with the dark area. Alright, I'm going to crop this image anyway though, so I'm, I don't necessarily have to work on the arm, but I'm just going to work on it anyway. Alright, for a shoot like these, um, it's best that you have the model wear a tube top. Uh, this session wasn't supposed to be in studio. This was supposed to be outdoor, but the rain came down, so we had to run in studio to do it. So. Right, so that's the reason why she's wearing this outfit. But normally, I would I would let them, I would advise them to bring a crop top, um, crop top or tube top, yeah, whatever it's called. All right, so I'm done with the mixing. The next step now is to apply. Well, I'm gonna clean up the skin, so I'm gonna press S on the keyboard for my clone stamp, and I'm gonna look for pimples to remove. All right, right here. You should also ensure that the brush is small as possible. It's the same size as the pimple. All right, I'm going to zoom into her eyes a little bit, and then I'm going to just remove the redness from the eyes. All right, good. That looks good. I'm going to come down here, so I'm seeing a little pimple right there. All right, looks good. So, guys, it's always good for you to zoom into your image and ensure that you remove everything. Yeah, when you're zoomed out, you may not, you know, see certain things. Alright, but this model, her face, her, her face is clean, so it's not very hard to, you know, work with. Alright, good. Alright, so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, come down to her shoulder. Alright, so this is another thing that you guys should avoid. Avoid from mixing where there is a birthmark or a mole because that's what it's going to look like. So this one I didn't really mix it. All right, that looks good. So the next step now is dodge and burning. So I'm going to just close this here. Then I'm going to go to the dodge and burning option. Working on uh, the burn layer, I'm going to press B on the keyboard and ensure that your flow is at 1%. All right. So because I flattened the skin, I'm now going to get a I'm going to create a shape um, for the skin now, dimension. So I'm going to get this brush a little bit bigger by using the bracket on the keyboard and then I'm just going to paint right here. Good. Ensure that you're painting on white because um, you're painting on black. So ensure that your color is at white, I mean, <laughs> or your, your um, foreground on white. Alright, so I'm going to paint right here as well. Let's look at it before and after for that. Before and after. Good. All right, so I'm going to come back here again. So in makeup, they call burning contour because contour is what gives it the shape of the face. And highlighting, well, dodge is highlighting. All right. So I'm going to dodge the shoulder. Well, not dodge, burn the shoulder right here, right here as well. All right, that looks good. I'm gonna come down to the arm. As I said, I don't necessarily have to do the arm, but I'm still gonna do it. All right, that looks good. So let's look at it before and after for what I've done before and after. See, it has a shape now. Now I'm gonna go up to the dodge and do some highlighting. So highlighting, you normally highlight under the eye. You'd highlight the nose bridge. Uh, you highlight the forehead. You don't want to add too much and there are times when you do some highlight when you do dodge when you do burning and and it's too much you can just use the highlighting to get rid of some of what you've added the chin should always be highlighted uh don't think i need to highlight anything else just maybe right here all right that looks good let's look at the before and after for everything before after good i think i could highlight here a little bit like right here right here 
right here good so I am done with the highlight let's look at the before and after for everything so I'm gonna hold shift just to pull it up and not shift spacebar to get the hand so I can move it then I'm gonna hold on on alt and then press this right here so that's the before that's the after that's the before that's the after all right so the next step now is to color the image I'm gonna go right to adjustments here and then I'm gonna go to color balance I always go to color balance I'm gonna go to shadows and then I'm gonna apply 5% right there let's look what the 5% does just a little change nothing too much all right so I'm gonna go back to the adjustment layer here and I'm gonna go to uh, where is that option where is it okay brightness and contrast and I'm gonna add 10 to the contrast let's look at the before and after for the contrast let's see if, um, let's see what the contrast does you can barely see it <laughs> all right that's fine but you know contrast is good for your images all right so that's that now I'm going to crop the image I'm going to crop it for Instagram so Control shift alt E to create a new layer Control J to duplicate the layer I'm gonna press C on the keyboard for the crop tool for the radius I'm gonna to come to 4 to 5 that's 8 by 10 inches and then I'm gonna crop it right here I'm gonna bring it down a little bit more yeah I think right here is good for me I like this perfect all right so now that I crop the image the next step now is to get rid of these loose hair right now so I'm gonna press P on the keyboard for my pen tool and then I'm gonna zoom up and make a selection like right here gonna hold on on shift so I can move it all right let me undo this all right let me go to the history all right I'm gonna undo this right here then I'm gonna come around here Right. so when you're in studio it's best that you pay attention to the models here so you don't have to go through all of this um, you can actually just pay attention to your image zoom in your image and you can adjust it so I am pressing down on I'm holding on on alt while I make the adjustment all right I'm just gonna do this So once you hit, once you hold on an alt, you're able to adjust the points. You just release when you finish. And then I'm gonna come right here. All right, good. Actually, no. I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna put everything in it. All right, good. Then I'm going to zoom back out and then make a big selection around the image. Alright, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do something um, different. I am actually going to paint this, I'm going to paint the color in. Alright, so I'm going to zoom up a little bit, get brush, put my brush at about 33% and then I'm going to sample and paint. So what you should do is to hold down on Alt to sample sample the area so just keep on sample the area while you're going around if you don't do this it's going to look different you're gonna be some you're gonna sample well if you select like one color when you go around the image it's going to look like a part of the image is lighter than the, another part of the image so you have to ensure that uh, you sample while you're going around so everything looks uniform because some part of the image is lighter than some or the background is lighter than some so you have to ensure that you uh, sample right around so now it looks natural so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more 
because right here if you can see right here this is what I was talking about if you don't sample properly you're gonna have two different colors so I'm just gonna get my brush smaller I'm gonna sample outside here and just brush to get it back all right good so let me zoom out back now all right so I'm gonna fix this little part right here by going to the liquify so you go on the filter and then click on liquify just to fix right there and then I'm gonna go to the push left tool right here and then I'm gonna get my brush a little bit bigger well smaller and then I'm gonna push it in this side all right and then I'm gonna pull out everything now a little bit because it looks flat That looks good. I'm gonna pull over here as well. All right, that looks good. Perfect. I'm not gonna move this here right here. I'm just gonna leave it. Ah, I like this. This looks good. All right, good. So that's it for that portion of the image. So what else should I do? Let me enhance her eyes a little bit. So I'm gonna go over here to the curves and bring up the curves. Then I'm gonna hold on and control, then I to invert. Get my brush, put my brush at, well, brush is at 33%, I'm gonna keep it there. I'm just gonna highlight. All right, good. All right, that looks good, that looks good. All right, so there's basically nothing else I need to do with the image. The background looks weird right here. I'm gonna go back to the original image right there. And then I'm gonna press B on the keyboard and I'm gonna brush my background, sample and brush it out. Because it looks weird. Alright, that looks good. Perfect. Alright, so that's it for the image. <laughs> There's basically nothing else I need to do with the image. You can always come back on your image and look around it just to see if there's anything else you change. Right here look a little bit weird. I'm gonna press J for the J. I'm gonna hold on on uh, shift and then press J until I find the patch tool I'm just gonna right that looks better perfect all right so that's it for the image there's basically nothing else I need to do with this image right now all I need to do now is to save it and upload it to Instagram all right so let me save it so I'm gonna go to export save for web I'm gonna save this at 1080. Change this to JPEG. Good. So I'm gonna save this to my desktop. Perfect. All right, so let me pull that image up right now. See what it looks like. All right, so I'm always gonna use this good so that's the image it's time to upload to Instagram so guys please go to Instagram and like this image <laughs> uh, thank you guys for watching my video uh, and also I want to thank you guys for 1800 and I think it's four or five or maybe six subscribers right now I really appreciate it guys I'm really happy that I'm helping people out there and I'll be uploading a lot of behind the scenes i have a behind the scene that i haven't edited yet i'm gonna edit that pretty soon and upload it and i'm gonna do i think during this week i'm gonna do another video for more of these images so i might just upload a second video during this week so stay tuned for that as well thank you guys for watching remember to turn on the notification bell and thanks for watching again <laughs> bye bye